Yes, people, what's going on? I hope you're all good. In today's video, I want to show you guys how you can get started with gymnastics and tricking as an adult. I'm going to start off by taking you through how to find a gym you can train at regularly. I'm then going to show you what to be doing during that gym session, and then I'm going to talk about things that can help you progress going forward. Now, by adult in this situation, I mean anyone who is old enough to attend an adult open gym session. For most gyms, this is usually 16. But regardless of what age you are, this video is for anyone who is looking to start gymnastics for the first time. So it doesn't matter whether you're 16 trying it for the first time, whether you're 30, 40, 50, whatever. Just give it a go and get started. If you've already got started and you've got a little bit of experience with training, then that is great. Some of the skills that I'm going to be showing and what to be doing during your first session might not apply to you as much as you might already be able to do them. However, a lot of the things I'm going to talk about afterwards in terms of how to progress are really going to apply to anyone. So that's enough of me waffling on about that. Let's get started with how to find a gym. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is search for a gym that's near you. So get your phone out, get your laptop out, get whatever you need to get out and go on Google and search gymnastics gyms near me or adult gymnastics sessions near me. From here you should have a list of websites that come up and all you're going to need to do from there is click on each one, see through it, see what the gym's like, see what times they offer the open adult gym sessions and if they work for you. Once you find a gym that you like and the times work best for you, all you're going to need to do is go and get down there for your first session. If you're a little bit anxious about going to an open adult gym session and you'd rather your first one be taught with a coach hands-on, then all you're going to need to do is do the exact same thing you've done before, search for the websites and search for the classes and see if they offer any open adult gym sessions that are taught. Now at this point, all that's left to do is get yourself down the gym and go and get started. So there we go, you've done the hard bit, you've committed to the drive, you've got yourself down the gym, now let's get ourselves in there and get started. Now the first thing you're probably going to notice as soon as you walk in the gym is that there are going to be people in there already training, all of which are at different levels. You're going to have people who are just starting out their journey just like yourself, you're going to have people who have done it for a little while, and then you're going to have people that have been doing it for years and years and are throwing all the crazy skills you can imagine. Now as much as this might seem intimidating first, it's really important that you don't shy away. All of these people have been a beginner at some point and have had to start off their journey just like yourself. The only difference between you and them is they've got experience in it, have been doing it, and you haven't. And that is exactly what you want. Now all of these people, regardless of whether they're just a beginner or whether they're really, really good and have been doing it for 10 years, are going to have some valuable information for you to know. So like I said, don't be shy. Feel free to ask these guys questions. Feel free to ask for a couple of tips when you're struggling with a skill. And I'm sure these people will be happy to help you out. Now another thing to note is to not compare yourself to others. Comparison is a thief of joy. And if you're comparing yourself as a beginner to someone who's got experience in doing it, then ultimately that's only going to lead to you being unhappy. Go to the gym, enjoy the process of learning, be happy to fall, be happy to fail, that is where you're going to learn. Now fortunately enough for you, falling over when you're doing roly polies and cartwheels is actually pretty fun, so I don't really think you're going to have too much struggle enjoying your session. Now in this next section, I'm going to be showing you guys how to warm up and what skills you can do enjoying your session. However, I'm not going to be going into great detail onto the skills I'm going to be showing you. Instead, I'm going to be giving a couple of little tips and the most valuable piece of information that I feel is relevant to those skills. All you're going to need to do is go and give them a try. Now, we're going to build up progressively. I'm not going to throw you in the deep end, making you send some crazy stuff straight away. We're going to work on the basics, master some shapes, and then we can get cracking. Now, the usual process for a warm up when it comes to gymnastics or tricking is that you might do a little bit of a pulse raiser, something to get your heart rate up a little bit, whether that's skipping, jumping, Jumping, a little bit of jogging around the track, wherever you want to do. And then you can go into some dynamic stretches to help stretch some specific areas that are going to help you out when doing the tricking or gymnastics. So here are some dynamic stretches I like to use before we get started into the session. And then once we finish that, we're going to get onto our basics. So now we've finished warm up, the next thing we're going to do is start to work on some basics. So we're going to get ourselves on a section of the floor and we're just going to do some rolls and some cartwheels going backwards and forwards all the way along. Now, as much as the basics might not be the most fun of things and in your head you're thinking you want to send the back flips, you want to do this, that and the other, you need to make sure you've got these down. These are the foundations for all the skills you're going to learn from this point. So make sure you've got them solid so you can give yourself the best opportunity to learn the harder skills as they come. I've been searching, I've been searching.
So as you saw the floor basics, we went for your rolls, we went for your handstand forward rolls, your dive rolls, and then your cartwheels and stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly give you some of the main tips that I would give for each of these things. So when you first start doing the forward roll, get yourself down in a full squat like so, arms in front of you, imagine rounding from your chest. If you're in this shape when you roll, you are gonna smack the floor and you're just gonna hit it really hard like that. Instead, imagine rounding in from your sternum. So like someone's got a knife here, you're not gonna let the knife touch you, are you? So you'd round. So keep that rounding in, bend from here, full, thinking about bringing your arms about a meter or so away and then put that chin on your chest and land on the traps to roll and stand up. Lovely. Now we're trying to get that a little bit higher. I want you to imagine if there's a little brick wall in front of you about hip height. So get yourself down to your squat squat here, round it back, arms about eye level. That block's in front of you. You're gonna pretend you're falling like a statue and you've got to push off your toes, hands on the floor, chin in and roll. And now it's time when I do that one, I'm not throwing my hands down to the floor, but instead I'm putting them in front of me so I know I'm safe and I'm jumping my legs up over my head. Push deep. So, cartwheel now. People's main mistake when they first start doing cartwheel, when they're trying to do it dramatically anyway, is that they do it and they bring their hands straight around side like that. Now, that cartwheel is fine. It might help you out with some tricking stuff. Obviously, it's got to be a little bit better than that. But if we're trying to get this gymnastic specific and turn this cartwheel into a round off, we really want to get it nice and straight. So, you're on this line, arms up, same position you just in for the forward roll, rounded chest, glute squeeze, pushing your hips forward. You're then going to lunge, boom, to this shape. And rather than bringing the hands down, you're going to think about kicking up into like a one-arm handstand almost. But then you are just going to let your leg go over and you're going to reach your second hand down onto the line. When you first start doing this one, it'd probably be easiest to do a side-to-side -side cartwheel. So that's where we start facing the side and we finish facing the side as well. Once you get comfortable with the side-to-side, -side, you can then think about doing the forward-to-back. So, nice long lunge, kick that one-arm handstand, let them feet come over. And then stand up nice and strong. To get that big push and snap to stand up where your body's moving as one, you need to start thinking about using your shoulders, hips and feet together. So get yourself down into that RDL position, that needle stand position. Think about pushing off of here, lifting your chest up, looking in front of you. And after that, you're gonna push off, bring your foot down and bring your hips forwards to stand up. When I do this one, I like to think of this as being a seesaw. Here, there, here, there. And then you've got to do is apply that to the cartwheel. You should be all good. Legs wide, seesaw. If you're really struggling with getting your cartwheel inverted, then one thing that I would do to help yourself out and just get used to going over the top and get rid of that fear a little bit is get yourself a nice soft mat out and practice handstand flat back. So, handstand flat back. Same thing with the cartwheels here. We don't want to think about rushing, bringing our hands down straight away, but instead we want to think about gliding our hands. Imagine the floor is water, your hands are like stones, and you've got to glide before they would skim. So. Arms up tall in front of you, rounded chest, glutes activated, kick to handstand, and forward hit the mat. So I should get used to doing that again. Take the mat away from yourself. And now think about doing that same cartwheel. We're in a corridor, the cartwheel's gonna start and finish on the line, and we're not gonna be in a rush to put the hands down. Lunge, make it long, glide, and we're round. First hand goes down sideways, second hand goes down like that so you make a T shape and as you come over look for the second hand and push. Now once your car was looking so like that and it's going dead over the top you can think about doing a round off. The easiest way to practice this is to start off on something high and drop down something low so if you've got a tumble track to the pit I'd recommend you do it from the end of the tumble track into the pit or alternatively if you've got some blocks around start on the top of the block and do it off the block. If you haven't got that then you need to think about doing all the same things you've done in your front to back cartwheel, but rather than bringing one leg down and snapping, as you feel that handstand shape, join your legs and pike down just like this. So, a little bit sketchy at first. All we need to do now to make it nice and neat is to push off that second hand and think about lifting our chest up as well as bringing them feet down now. So, second hand goes in and we're gonna do a big push up nice and tall. Here. And you can see the round off starts to move and you get a bit of power from it. As far as the handstand hops are concerned across the floor, the ones where we kick the handstand, we do a little bit of a hop off the hands. 
We need to think about this just like the skimming stones analogy I used before, but even more so. So now we're gonna kick up to that handstand. We're gonna glide our hands in, swooping across the floor. And as they hit, we're gonna think about doing a shoulder shrug, just like that with a nice tight body, and our hands are gonna skim. So start this off, have the arms behind you, get into a low lunge just like this, and make sure you are swooping across the floor and gliding the hands. But as long as your stones get a little hop just like that, you're doing pretty well. Once you start to get more confident, start higher up, go a little bit faster into it, and see if you can do a really nice and high block off. <laughs> and those are a few of the basics that I would start off learning, especially if I was trying to go into some gymnastic stuff. All right, so we've gone through the basics. I've shown you guys some of the key points for some of the skills that you want to work towards in the basics, and now we're going to move on to some fun stuff. So just to finish up your session, you're going to get yourself on the trampoline. And the skills we're going to try and do on the trampoline, or at least attempt, are going to be a tuck front and a fly spring. So to do a tuck front, that's going to be similar to how we do a dive roll. So the way that I'll build it up is start off on the floor, get a few blocks going, start off doing a dive roll going over it, and as you get a little bit more confident, start to tuck that chin in, take the arms away, and do like a front somersault onto your back onto the mats, and then land off on the floor. After you do this up to a certain height, you should have a little bit of a better understanding on how to flip, and tuck fronts into the pit from the trampoline shouldn't feel too bad. If you don't want to use that method of learning how to tuck front, then I recommend you come down to the edge and you practice doing it, going off the edge. So, just to start off with, nice and easy, get yourself in low, arms up tall. You're going to imagine throwing a football, then you're going to put your chin in your chest, and someone's going to give you a wedgie. After that, grab the knees, get in nice and tight, and you should get at least a little bit of rotation onto your back. So here, football, wedgie, chin in. Keep on doing that a few times until you're feeling a little bit more confident, and then you get yourself up nice and tall until you're on your tiptoes, throw the football, bum up and over your head, and front flip. The most common mistake that people usually have when they do this is that as they're jumping, they tend to throw their body and look straight down, which means their flip happens here, rather than thinking about having something in front of them, they're gonna rotate up and around, resulting in their flip happening here. So, arms go down, and now we think arms throw to here, and then bum up from this point. Here, bum over the head, tuck, and you're round. So now the next thing you want to learn is going to be the fly spring. So in order to get our confidence going for that, we need to get used to going over your head, but actually getting a little bit of a spring now. So we are going to combine the handstand flat back with the handstand hop that we practiced earlier on. Get yourself on the edge of the pit. Nice long lunge, mark it out. Remember, we don't want to be bringing our hands straight down like this. Let's go into our handspring. But instead, we are going to let ourselves do a nice long lunge going into it, glide our hands, bringing our heels all the way over, and when you feel your heels are past your head to this point, you are gonna push off, bring your feet down to the floor, and try and finish looking in front of you. So now we know what we're doing with the tuck front and the fly spring slash handspring. Let's get ourselves over the trampoline, and I'll take you guys through it and show you what needs to be done. All right, so like I mentioned with the tuck fronts, get yourself starting at the edge of the trampoline. Do two bounces, one, two, three to the end, and then we're gonna take off. Now in the tuck front, remember, we're not trying to look down and throw our hands down like this, but instead, ugh, you wanna imagine there's a big point up here that you're trying to jump, throw the football into, and get your butt up and over. So, one, two, three, we're up here, and bum up and over. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the fly spring. So think about doing all those same things, just practice. So we're here, start off at the edge if you want, just build a bit of confidence, go hands in front of you, two bounces, jump to handstand and flat back. When you do this one, most important thing is, as you're bringing your hands down, think about getting them legs up nice and tall so you land in a big handstand shape. After they're feeling really good, get yourself into it, start off a little bit further away, do two smaller jumps, go into the edge, and then try and land on them feet just like practice. So swing the hands in, heels over, and as you feel your hands hit this time, you've got to push off and land. One, two, three. And there we have them. So your tuck front and your fly spring aren't gonna look like that straight away, but just commit a bit of time to working both, keep on working it consistently, and eventually it will be there. So that is where I'm gonna leave it for the skills in this video. All the stuff that I showed you isn't the Bible. You don't need to follow it to an absolute T, but if you didn't have any idea of what he was doing and you wanted to go to a session and have a little bit of a try, then those are just some skills you can work on.
So now at this point in the video, I've taken you guys through some skills, I've shown you guys what you need to do to improve them and a couple of tips that are going to help make learning them a little bit easier. So now I just want to take you guys through what you need to be doing after this video in order to continue to progress in tricking or gymnastics. Now the way to progress in tricking or gymnastics is the same as anything else. You need to make sure you are consistent and you need to make sure you are doing that for a long time. There are going to be some skills and some basics you probably are going to be able to learn within the first few months and that in itself is really enjoyable. However, in order to push on and get those bigger skills, there is going to be a period of time where you're going to have to grind and really work for a skill. And it's really important that in these moments, you aren't giving up on yourself. You're going to go in, you're going to have some really good sessions some days, you can have some really bad sessions others. However, you need to have bad to make way for the good. And a lot of the lessons that you're going to learn and a lot of the things you need to know are going to be learned on the days where the sessions weren't as good or potentially you weren't feeling it that day. You just need to make sure you go in, get it done and learn what you can. Another thing that can really good to help you out is having a training partner. Now, you're not necessarily going to have one as soon as you go into the gym. It might take a couple of weeks, a couple of months of going there to build up rapport with people, build up some friendships. However, when you go on your first session, you'll probably notice people doing certain skills and skills similar to you want to do. So, approach that group of people, see if you can work in with them. And you never know, they'll probably end up teaching you a couple of cool skills, giving you bits of information you didn't know, and you might have made some new training partners. They're going to make this learning process a whole lot easier for you leading up into the future. Along with that, like we said, you can find yourself a training partner, and even if you have to go to this open outer gym session yourself the first time and you're not that confident to approaching people straight away, then there's usually a coach on deck to help you out if you need it. So go and ask the coach, ask them for a little bit of advice on the skills you want to work on and they will come and help you out. And you'll have your start into tricking or outer gymnastics. I know I've referred to this video as tricking or outer gymnastics, however, it's been quite gymnastics focused. So in future, I will do some skills that I would first learn when starting tricking. However, for now, I hope you guys have taken a lot of value from this video and I hope to see a few of you guys in some adult gym sessions soon. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If there are any videos in particular you want to see or if you have any questions regarding any adult gym sessions or gymnastics or tricking in general, then please do feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I'll make sure I get back to you as soon as possible. So leave a like on the video and subscribe to the page and I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one.